Uh, greeting guys. My name is Ernest Nogiri from Tutoza Matlali. Actually, I'm going to give you the lesson today about um, geometry. So I'll basically focus on mathematics for now. But then, if you need help specifically on the math and science related subject uh, topics, please contact us on the following uh, numbers. 0, 7, 9, 30, 40, 20, 4, 3. So those are my contacts. You can text me on WhatsApp or you can call. Now, let's go straight to our lesson. Um, we'll focus on geometry. You know that geometry forms a part of paper 2 and it takes a lot of marks. So on paper 2, we have analytical geometry and Euclidean. So analytical geometry usually focuses mostly on the coordinates. Then Euclidean geometry usually focuses mostly on the synthetic method, it's a reasoning and algebra. So I would like to focus on Euclidean geometry because that's the topic that, that's the topic that uh, usually give you the challenge but today i'll make sure that you get distinction from that topic so from the word geometry geometry the geo simply means the earth the metri simply means measurement now, it simply means geometry is all about the measurement. So it focuses mostly on the point, the plane, the shapes, and any figure that you can think of. Now, any object can be measured. Look around, just look around yourself. I think you recognize a lot of objects. Now, we need to know how do we measure them. Not only that to measure the directions, the distance, and also to find the direction in terms of coordinates. Now, let's start from the basic part of geometry. We start with a point, and we also have a line segment. There's a point, there's a line, segment and we also have a ray so if you can look at the line segment and this one this one has an arrow so this is a ray it has a starting point but it continues up, up to infinity it doesn't have the end point now we also have a line this is a line now a point is it's simply a position. Now, a position can have a name. We name our point by simply giving them the variables. It can be a point. We can call this point A or B. The line segment is a combination of points. Now, if we move from this point up to this point by simply having two make a lot of points therefore we end up having a line segment now a ray it has a starting point but it doesn't have an end point now a line simply means it doesn't have a starting point and an end point now from there this becomes our straight line that forms a, a, a basic of everything that we'll be talking about now if we combine this line and what we have, if you combine the line, let's say we have this line, the first line, and the second line. They form, where they intersect, they form what you call a vertex. Now, this line and this line, let's say we name this line, line A, and this line is line B. So you can tell that these are two line, uh, two rays. They have the starting point, and they don't end. Then... In between, we can have the distance between them. 
Now, there is this one, we call them angles. Now, an angle is measured in degrees or radians. So, the angle that is less than 90 degrees, let's say the angle is less than 90 degrees. Less than 90 degrees simply means the angle between 0 degrees and 90 degrees. So, any angle that is between 0 degrees and 90 degrees, you call them their acute angles. It's an acute angle. Now, we also have a way of representing this, whereby we can simply say, if we have to extend, if we have to extend this line in the anti-clockwise direction, what you realize is that they will form another shape, another angle again, and this angle it will be. 90 degrees. Now, this is a right angle. Now, the angle that is more than, if we extend it again to make it more, that simply means we will have something like this. Now, this becomes obtuse angle. And you can realize that the obtuse angle is greater than the acute angle. Now, it simply means this angle is greater than 90 degrees. So, this angle is greater than obtuse angle is greater than the angle is greater than sorry, is greater than 90 degrees. So, the obtuse angle is greater than 90 degrees. Now, if we extend it again anti-clockwise, what do we have? We end up having something like this. Now, what is this? This is a straight line. The straight line, we simply say, the straight line, if we were to measure this angle, this angle would be 180 degrees. Now, that is a straight line. Now, what if we extend it again? Now, that simply means the angle should be greater than 180 degrees. What do you call that angle? You call it a reflex angle. Measure it from this point up to this point. Now, this is a reflex angle. Now, you realize that if we extend it again, it simply means we will have only this point up to there. Then, that simply means the angle that we measure will be measuring it from there up to a point. Now, this will be the angle around a point of which is a revolution. An angle around a point simply means adding up to 360 degrees. That is a revolution. A revolution, one revolution is made up of 180 degrees. Okay. Now, allow me to erase if you have managed to capture this one. From there, we will combine this. We will combine the lines and the angle. Now, if we combine the lines and the angle, let's say we are given a straight line. This straight line intersects with another line and another line from that point. So, they form what you call two angles. This is the point that we should, they share, it's the vertex of this. Now, let's say this point is point A, point B, point C, point D. Now, this angle, we can call it angle theta. This angle, we can call it alpha. Now, we say that these two angles, look at this. You have an acute angle. Don't forget that. This is an acute angle. What did we say? We say that any acute angle is the angle measured between 0 degrees and 90 degrees. That simply means if we add these two, the angle theta plus the angle alpha, we will get 90 degrees. And if we add these two angles and they give us 90 degrees, we simply say these two angles are complementary angles. 
So we have a word there. Complementary angles simply means adding up to 90 degrees. Now, if we were to extend again to have another line, then a line that intersects with the line that we have A, B, this point is C, then we have G there. You realize that we have a straight line and another straight line D, B, D, C that intersect with the straight line A, B. Now, they form two angles, this angle and this angle. So this will be the angles on a straight line. Remember we said this is a straight line. So it simply means if we take this angle to be A and this angle to be small b, that simply means if we add angle A plus angle B, we will get how much? 180. Remember we said angles on a straight line add up to 180. Now, we have a wait for that. Reasoning part, we have to say this angles, if they add up to 180, they are sub Mentally. So we have another way to use. Angles that add up to 180, they are supplementary. And where do we get them? We get them on a straight line. Okay. From there, what if we have lines that intersect each other but it passes? Now, what does it create? It creates four angles. The angle A, angle B, angle C, and angle D. Let's say this is P, Q, R, S. Now we have two line segments that intersect each other and form four angles. Now remember, this will be the angles around a point. How many are they? They are four. If we add them up, we should get how much? I think you have the answer for that. Uh, it simply means we have to say angle A plus angle B plus angle C plus angle D. That will be equivalent to, remember we said angles around the point sum up to 360. That's correct. 360 degrees. Now, the reason for that, we said is it angles around the point or we can say revolution. Now we have another way. Revolution. Once you come up, come across the lines, the angles around the point, we know that if you add them all, you should get one uh, three hundred and sixty degrees. Are we clear on that one? Okay. If we are fine now, let's proceed. Allow me to erase. Let's say we have our two line segments that intersect with each other, A, B, C, D. Remember we said this angle and this angle, this angle, this angle. If we add the angles around the point, they will give us 360 degrees. But not only that, there is something that we realize here. Um, this angle and this angle. We can make a relationship for that. So angle A and C, we are saying angle A is equal to angle C. And what would be the reason for that? Okay? These two angles, they are vertical opposite to each other. That simply means we say they are vertical opposite angles. That simply means we can say the same with angle B and angle D. That angle A, B is equal to angle D. They are vertical opposite angles. And we know that if we add all of them, this angle plus this angle plus this angle plus this angle, we get 360. Not only that, if we add angle B and angle A, we get 
the one hundred and eighty degrees because they are supplementary. They are angles on a straight line AB, and this will be the angles on a straight line AC. That simply means you can you get you are allowed to say angle A plus angle D is equal to one eighty, and angle B plus angle C is equal to one eighty, or you can simply say angle A plus angle B is one eighty, and angle C plus angle G is one hundred and eighty degrees. Now let's proceed. Let's say you are given a question now. You are given an equation. They say this angle is unknown, but they manage to give you that this angle is um, 60 degrees. Then this angle is unknown, and this angle is also unknown. Now you are required to find the angle A, B, D. Now let's use the relationship that we have. We know that angles on a straight line is this point. Let's call this point P, this point Q, this point R, this point S. We know that angles on a straight line add up to 180 and they are supplementary. But so, so do we. We actually gonna focus on what we already know and what are we given then what we are looking for. Always when you are given a problem in mathematics, focus on those three steps. What I already know, what am I given, and what I'm looking for. So what we already know is that angles on a straight line add up to 180 and opposite vertical opposite angles are equal. We also know that if we add angles around the point, we'll get 360 degrees. Therefore, that alone can help us to get the angle A, B, D. Now let's start with angle A. Just realize angle A is on a straight line. Simply means we'll say A plus 60 degrees is equal to 180 degrees. The reason for this, there are angles on a straight line. They are supplementary. Angles. Now, to get A, we just do the inverse of the operation sign. They added A plus 60. Now, the inverse of addition is always subtraction. The inverse of multiplication is division. Now, because they added A 60 degrees to A, we will subtract the 60 degrees on the left-hand side. Whatever we do on the left-hand side, we also do it on the right-hand side. Therefore, we simply say angle A is equal to 180 degrees. Subtract 60. Now, what will be the answer? I think you don't need a calculator for that, right? So the answer is 120 degrees. Now, A is 180 degrees. You can write it back there. Then from there, what do we realize? We can still say uh, we have another straight line, uh, R, S. Therefore, we can sum angle A and plus angle D. Therefore, we get angle D. But then, I advise you to use all whatever that we have, the knowledge that we have. So, we can apply another one. We use angles on a straight line. Let's say to get the another uh, B, we can simply use vertical opposite angles. Just realize that A is opposite, is vertical opposite to B. Therefore, angle A is equal to angle B. And is equal to 120 degrees. Wow, what is the reason? Vertical opposite angles. Now to get angle D, let's use the last one. We managed to use angles on a strict line. We managed to use vertical opposite angles. Now what is the last one? I think you still recall it. I, I hope you will get the answer very quick. You can even get the answer by using vertical opposite angles, but I avoided the repetition. Let's try it this way. Let's use the, the part whereby we add all of them. Angle A plus angle B plus 60 degrees plus angle D is equal to 360 degrees. Now, we said if our angles add up to 360 degrees, what is the reason for that? This is a revolution. Revolution angles around the point. 
Now, do we have A? Yes, we have. It's 180. The answer to choose there. Do we have angle B? No, we don't. But yes, we, we managed to get it. What about angle D? We don't have angle D. So we are only looking for angle D. So we can simply say this is 120 plus 120 degrees plus 60 plus angle D is equal to 360 degrees. If you sum them up, you will just realize that this angle, this 120 plus 120 degrees plus 60, they sum up to how much? 300. That's correct. That simply means angle D, it will be, angle D, it will be what, 360 degrees subtract 300. Therefore, we get 60 degrees. Now, I think you can also get the answer by simply saying D is op a vertical opposite to this one. Okay. If you manage to get that one, now allow me to erase so that we can move to the next one. Okay, now let's talk about the lines. If you are given a line like this and another line, now if you are given two lines, let's say this is line A, B, this is C, D. Why do you, why do you realize here? Realize that these two lines they will never intersect each other. The lines that will never intersect each other and they are going in the same direction. They are parallel lines. So we call this parallel lines. Now, what are the properties of parallel lines? Firstly, parallel lines we say that do not they do not intersect each other. Now, if they do not intersect each other, what is special about them? They are gradient are equal. The, the, the gradient of AB is equal to the gradient of CD. What is a gradient? Gradient is a slope. Now, not only that, we, we can simply denote the parallel lines by using this symbol. It simply means AB is parallel to CD. So once you come across this, Simple just know what they are talking about, parallel lines. Okay, from there, not only that, we can still continue and try to add. What if we have a line that intersects these two parallel lines? Now, we just realize that they form angles. Now, this is parallel to this. They form angles. They form this angle, this angle, this angle, this angle, this angle, this angle, this angle. Now, it simply means we have angle A, angle B, angle C, angle D. Here we also have angle A, A, D, E, F, G. Let's say you are only given the last angle, which is this one. And they say it's 30 degrees. Now we have to make the relationship of parallel lines to find the unknown. Now, on parallel lines, you have to focus on the shape that these parallel lines make. The first shape is F. The F shape. Parallel lines will usually form the shape like this. It's an F. Then F can be upside down, upside down, or it can face in this direction. Now, if you have the F shape, just know what our main focus are these angles. And how are they? We simply say this angle and this angle, they are equal. Why do we say these two angles are equal to each other? The reason for that is corresponding. This angle and this one correspond with each other. So corresponding angles are equal. Now, another shape that you can come across is the U shape. Remember the U shape can also be up and down. Now, if we have the U shape, our main focus are these angles inside. Now, this angle, let's say this is angle X, this is angle Y. These two angles, if we sum them up, if we add them, it simply means X plus Y. 
we say angle y plus angle s they will give us 180 degrees and the angle the reason for that they are supplementary so how are they they are co interior angles so co interior angles are supplementary co interior angles they are angles inside of this u shape that is made by two parallel lines now this is co interior angles so co interior angles are supplementary supplementary don't forget that we said supplementary angles add up the angles that add up to 180 degrees now the last shape that you should have is the z shape Now, if you come across the Z shape, just know that this angle and this angle becomes our priority. We'll only focus on that, on those two angles. Now, this angle and this angle, we say that they are equal. So, this angle will be equal to that one. And the reason for that, they are alternating. So alternating angles are equal. Now, with this, you can formulate a mnemonic. Something that you will remember. Once you come, you come across the parallel lines, it will be easy for you to recall. So you can see that the first, I will have the shape. Now I say, if I have these two angles that are equal to each other, now the reason for that, they are corresponding. Then, if I have the U shape, then I say that the co interior angles they are supplementary. So I have supplementary angles co interior. Then the last part is the Z shape. If we have the Z shape, just know that our main focus are these two angles. Now, how are they? They are equal. The reason is alternating. So, have this mnemonic. Always, when you come across parallel lines, just use this mnemonic. I simply say it's FECO US COIN ZEM. So, in that way, you will it will be easy for you to remember. FECO US COIN ZEM. So, with FECO US COIN ZEM, we can be able to solve problems that have parallel lines. Now, let's apply this. The same method that I managed to give you. This FECO is as coin zero to solve the unknowns. But not forgetting what we have talked about. Those angles on a straight line, vertical opposite angles, and angles around the point. Now, let's look for an F shape, U shape, or Z shape. Any of this. It doesn't mean that you have to get all of them. But if you find one or two, then try to use it. Now, what do I realize? I realize that from there, this point up to this point, going there to there, I form as a chain. Now, that simply means this angle and this angle, I'll say they are equal. So, angle C is equal to angle F. The shape that they form is a Z shape. And you know that if these two angles, they form a Z shape, that simply means this angle and this angle they are equal to each other. The reason for that they are alternating angles. Now, we managed to get this two. What else can we get? The, J, the Z shape can be in this form, from that point going there and this going there. Now, that simply means this angle and this angle, they also form a Z shape. D is equal to angle D is equal to angle E. Now the reason for this is they are alternating angles. And alternating angles are equal. Now from there, let's focus on if we can get the U or the F shape. Now can we get the F shape? Let's try to constantly to move from this point, go in there, then downwards passing through this point of intersection, then we realize that this angle here and this angle here, they will be equal to each other because that is the F shape. 
Now we will simply say angle D is equal to 30 degrees. The reason for this, it's an F shape and we said once we come across the F shape, the angles are equal, the reason is because they are corresponding angles. Now D corresponds with the 30 degrees. Now the F, the F shape can also be in this direction. It can face in this direction. Now that is an F. Now it simply means this angle and this angle, angle C and angle G, they are also equal to each other. Angle G and angle C, they are also equal to each other. The reason for this is a corresponding angles. And we know that corresponding angles are equal. Now let's try to use the U shape. Where can we get the U shape? Look at this. Doesn't mean that U should always face upward. It can be sideways. So if you construct from there, move from that point, point of intersection going down to this point of intersection and moving to the right. We just realize that we have two angles there. Therefore, we can say angle D is equal to angle F. The reason for that they are core interior angles. Now since we managed to say this angle is 30 degrees and D is equal to 30 degrees. Therefore if we know angle D that is 30 degrees and we have this resonance. You can apply them. I only managed to apply from that point. So you can just try to figure it out. Not forgetting the issue of adding up to 180, which is supplementary, when we have a straight line. Not forgetting the issue of uh, uh, supplementary angles, uh, revolution, and also vertical opposite angle. So we can get B by, by knowing that this is 30 degrees and B will be 30 degrees. The reason for that, they are vertical opposite angles. And I'm using the, uh, whatever that we got in from the previous part that we focused on. What else? We can add angle A and angle D. What will be the answer for that? Angle A plus angle D, they will be equal to 180. Why do we say that? Because they are angles on a straight line. So you can try to calculate everything that we have there. If you, you understand this part now let's move to the next part allow me to erase <clears throat> we also have if actually we are given a line segment and another line segment by sight the one that we started with a b DC. So if you are given a line segment AB and CD bisect the AB, therefore we say that it forms the angle here that is equivalent to the 90 degrees. Now this becomes the right angle. Now if two lines bisect each other, we have what we call perpendicular lines. So if AB bisect CD, therefore we have perpendicular line. Perpendicular lines usually at a point of intersection, they form a right angle. Now, what is so special about perpendicular lines? Now, the first part is that they form 90 degrees whenever they intersect. The second part is that the gradient of the slope of AB if we multiply it with the slope of say line segment CD, the product will give us negative 1. So this is the most crucial part about the perpendicular lines. Now, where do you usually get perpendicular lines? Remember, perpendicular lines, you can get them in a right angle triangle. You can also get them in different shapes that they form the 90 degrees. From there, let's say we have this line segment A, 
B, then it bisect another line, then we have another line there. We know that this angle is a right angle, it's 90 degrees because it bisects line AB. So let's call this point D, C, this one E. Now, if we are given this angle is A and this one is B, we know that angle A and angle B, they should add up to angle A plus angle B, they should add up to 90 degrees because these two lines will be equal to this one. The reason for that is because this angle is a right angle. If a, B, line AB is bisected by line CD, therefore we form two right angles. Now this is another right angle. If we sum up this right angle plus this right angle, we should be able to get 180. And if we add A plus B, we know that these angles are complementary angles. They add up to 90 degrees. If we add angle A plus angle B plus angle 90 degrees, then we get 180 degrees. The reason for this is because they are angles on a straight line. So the angles on a straight line they are supplementary. Okay. So if the line CE bisect, to bisect is to, is to cut something into two equal halves. That simply means we will say angle A is equivalent to angle B. Now you can guess the you can guess the answer for that. If line C E bisect A B, therefore it simply means this angle will be equal to that one. Therefore, since we have 90 degrees and we said that if we add angle A plus angle B, we get 90 degrees. And if angle A is equal to angle B, now that simply means angle A is equal to 50, 45 degrees. You don't need a calculator for that. Simple. Okay. Do you get this part? If you manage to understand this part, allow me to erase so that we can move to collinear points. Okay. Now, if we are given the line segment, the line segment A, B, C, we are given three points, point A, point B, and point C. If the distance from A to B is equal to the distance from A, B to C, if this is equal to this, therefore we are saying that right the, 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 these two uh, uh, lines, they are collinear. A, B is collinear to uh, B, C. Now, not only that, this point we call it a midpoint. Because it will be the point between A and C. So if we have a point between A and C and it's in the middle, that simply means it's at our midpoint. If this is our midpoint, now what happens to the gradient? If we were to calculate the gradient, the slope of AB and the slope of BC, the slope of BC it will be equal to the slope of A. C. So collinear points have the same gradient. That's what you can conclude about collinear points. Now, catch us on our next topic whereby we'll be talking about the triangles and their properties. From now on, let's tune on.